Good morning, everyone. As you're making your way back to your sofas and your recliners, uh, it's my privilege to continue to lead us in prayer this morning uh, as we uh, continue in worship. I asked uh, Tony if I might have a a privilege here to give at least uh, an introduction to my prayer and an exhortation to you as a congregation at these unusual times. These are definitely unusual times at best, and every day seems to bring a new change to the norms we're accustomed. And while these changes may be temporary, one thing that hasn't changed is our dependence on God, not only for our eternal security, but our earthly provision. One benefit of this illness and our society's reaction to it is that we have been reminded that of our utter dependence on God and the temporal nature of our current earthly home. At unusual times such as these, the Psalms is a go-to book of praises and promises. As you might recall that one of, one of our recent Sunday school classes, we studied Dr. Godfrey's learning to love the Psalms. The book of Psalms is divided into five books or collections of Psalms, and this forms the outline for his study. He provides a summary statement for each book. In these unusual times that we live, that it's heightened our insecurities, has our emotions swinging with every changing mandate, and requires that that we worship virtually for the time being. I think two of these books or collections of Psalms seem particularly pertinent. Book one comprises Psalms one through 41 and is summarized by Dr. Godfrey as the king's confidence in God's care. Book four comprises Psalms 90 through 106 and is summarized as the king's comfort in God's faithfulness. I would commend these collection of Psalms for your prayerful consideration in the next few weeks. As these times, at these times where we are tempted to watch the nonstop news coverage looking for some glimmer of hope or relief, go to God's good news for true comfort and confidence. Then we will shine forth the light of his glory and realize the divine purpose that God has given these days. So as we pray, I'm going to use uh, those Psalms as an outline for my prayer. We'll start with Psalm 34 and end with Psalm 100. So let's pray this morning. I will extort the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Heavenly Father, these are certainly strange times for us, but in the pale of history are really fairly dim in the scope of human affliction. Most importantly, these are days ordained by you and they have served as a revelation and reminder to me how tightly I have gripped the things of this world, how fragile and shifting is my faith and confidence in you. Thank you for this time of gentle refining and eternal perspective. I pray that you would shower your blessings on us as you always have, that our souls would find rest in you alone and that our hope and encouragement would come from you alone. Father, you are our rock, our salvation and our fortress. We will put our trust in you at all times and pour out our hearts to you because you are our refuge. We praise you for this beautiful morning that you have ordained for your people to gather and worship. What a privilege to be able to worship you together, even in a virtual way for now, to raise our praises and prayers together and before your very throne to join them with our brothers and sisters worldwide as we lift our prayer to you. What a joy to know that our prayers are a sweet fragrance to you, that you desire the praise of your people and delight in providing all good things to those who put their trust in you. The throne room worship scene in Revelation 4 that was our call to worship is our ultimate hope. No more anxiety, separation, sorrow, or pain. Only the glory of our beloved King and the coveted greeting of our Savior, well done, good and faithful servants. Come and share your master's joy. Lord, as we come to you this morning with our petitions, we take great comfort knowing that you are sovereign over our affairs and that you love us. We come boldly to your throne, trusting that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us as we express our desires to you. Lord, we particularly lift to you the leaders of our nation and communities during this time. Give them particular wisdom to deal with this situation. Give them compassion, cause them to rule justly. Give us an obedient heart to ease their burden of leadership. Be with those who are dealing with the ill. Protect them from sickness. I pray that you would restrain evil in our country and give us a spirit of order and decency. Lord, we lift up our ministries at Redeemer. We know this is not a time to pause or or withdraw. As we make temporary adjustments to our current situation, we pray for success as we minister the gospel to a lost and dying world. Let us be the picture of those whose hope is stayed upon you. I pray that as we have unique opportunities to serve, our hands and feet would be the hope 
to the suffering and a sweet fragrance to those who are hurting and uncertain for your glory. Be with our missionaries in foreign lands. We pray particularly for Dan and Becky Young ministering on our southern border. I pray for success in their mission to train local church pastors and church planners. I pray that the gospel would bring stability and calm to these areas. Surround all our missionaries with your love and comfort as they are far from their family. Father, we pray for the many ministry opportunities you have given us as a local church. Make our ministries effective to nourish, encourage, strengthen, and mature us. Father, we know that there are many needs and concerns. We have many that are struggling with chronic and acute illnesses and disease. We ask for your particular hand of protection on them at this time and ultimately for healing in their bodies. We also ask for comfort for those who are hurting and sorrowing emotionally. For all enduring difficult times, we ask for your wisdom, not just to endure the times, but to redeem these times as ordained by you for our maturity and the strengthening of our faith. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are, his, we are the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Father, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you that by the Holy Spirit, you feed us from your word, no matter how it is delivered or where it is received. Make us obedient doers of the word that we hear preached today and eager participants in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we have the opportunity to give to the Lord from the many blessings that he has given to us in the form of an offering. And for this week, you could either use the CCB or you can go on the link in the description to give online. Let's pray. Lord, we are grateful for your provisions for us. We confess that these are times that are shaky in our minds and many people are wondering about their jobs and about providing for their families. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would relieve their stress, give them a sense of your presence and your provision that you will provide our daily bread. And I pray for this church that you would give her members uh, peace and the ability to give. And I pray, O oh Lord, that we would be faithful with anything that is given, uh, that we'd be wise with these offerings, and that they, we would use them in a way that honors the Lord Jesus. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> 